we need more young adults to study hard sciences. So hard sciences are things like physics, nanotechnology, biology, chemistry, genetics, so on and so forth. Soft sciences are things like psychology, anthropology, sociology, so on and so forth, philosophy. And I think that young adults should study hard sciences in greater numbers because, quite frankly, the hard sciences are where some pretty amazing things can happen. And that's not to say that amazing things can't happen in the soft sciences, but I'm talking about things like radical life extension, potentially. See the books Ending Aging by Aubrey de Grey and Michael Ray for more information about that. Um, read the book Abundance by Peter Diamandis and Stephen Kotler, I believe. And they talk about some pretty amazing things that are happening, uh, you know, in relation to the hard sciences, you know, as far as, you know, greater amounts of, and it's called, yeah, Abundance, the future, the future is Better Than You Think. I think that's the title. It's about, you know, all these, you know, good technologies that are, have existed that are coming into existence and may exist in the future that can benefit humanity. And again, you know, the term soft and hard in relation to science is sort of a, it's not literal. It is sort of literal in the sense that the hard sciences generally deal with physical things versus the soft sciences tend to deal with intangible things. You know, for example, psychology studies, you know, the mind. So, but, uh, but with that being said, um, you know, and there's, yeah, so I hope as a, if you're a young adult, I hope you can be inspired to study things like the hard sciences. And again, I think the best way to get the proper inspiration is to, you know, do your own research and read and, you know, look at videos, uh, you know, read, read popular science, popular mechanics, uh, you know, and, and also, so in other examples, the like Tesla Motors, SpaceX, Solar City, those all deal with the hard sciences. And you know, especially things like SpaceX, you know, which is private, Elon Musk, his private space company, um, you know, and Tesla Motors, which is you know an electric car company, um, you know, that takes knowledge of the hard sciences to do stuff like that. And those are just, you know, two spheres, two areas where the hard sciences can be applied. And, you know, there's a bunch of different areas where the hard, science, hard sciences can be applied. Um, and again, also, just to reiterate, you should read the book Ending Aging, or just check it out. <laughs> go look it up, just get a free, you know, digital sample or something if you can. Um, or go to the website, sends.org. Um, or, you know, even go on and just go to a search engine on the Internet and search for, you know, novel technologies, you know, future technologies, so on and so forth, and that has the potential to inspire you. Because again, if, if these things are ever going to come to fruition, you know, if we're ever going to develop, you know, faster than light travel, which Harold White with NASA is working on something called warp field mechanics, which may make it possible, it may not make it possible, but it may make it possible too. Um, you know, and again, high-risk research is how we have sort of monumental shifts in technology and, uh, you know, monumental, I don't know if monumental is the right word, dramatic, how we can have significant shifts in technology and how we experience, you know, our humanity on Earth. Uh, you know, we can thank um, high-risk research, I think, in a, large, in a large way for these shifts. Anyway, I'll end it there. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe uh, and have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, and night or night wherever and whenever you may be.